Now, in this part of the clinic, we are going to talk about nouns. Nouns are naming words. They are words that we used to, I mean, refer to things, places, people, objects, and so on and so forth. Now, we don't need to define what a noun is because this, this is uh, something that we have always known. But I just want to talk about them briefly. Now, nouns can be classified. We all know what nouns are. Nouns can be classified into four groups. And what are the four groups? We have proper nouns. Proper nouns, which we all know. Proper nouns are the actual names of people and places. Then we have common nouns. These are the nouns that refer to things that share similar attributes or similar characteristics. Now, talking about proper nouns, how can you recognize a proper noun? Proper nouns are normally started with, well, with capital letter, irrespective of where they occur in the sentence. Whether they occur at the beginning, at the middle, or at the end of the sentence, they always start with what? Capital letter. Like I said before, they are the actual names of places and their people. For instance, Michael is an example of a proper noun, while Lagos is also what? an example of a proper noun. Now, common noun, like I said, they are the names that are similar, I mean, they are common to things that share similar characteristics or attributes. For instance, boy. We have different types or kind of boys. So, whether it's a white man or a black man, but they are all boys, as long as they belong to the same age, I mean, particular age bracket. Then we have tables. When we talk about tables, there are different types of tables. We have wooden table, plastic table, but they all share the same function because they are used to set our, our things on. Then those are common nouns. Then we also have what we call collective nouns. What are collective nouns? These are nouns that refer to a group of things that are seen as one as a singular entity. When you refer to a group or a collection of things or people as a unit, we call them collective nouns. For instance, as I talk about a baby of ladies, that's when I talk about a group of ladies, that's what I mean. A baby of ladies. I can say uh, a galaxy of what? Of stars. A galaxy of stars. I can say a board of directors. A board of directors. Then we also have a, a herd of cattle. A herd of cattle. We can equally say a flock of sheep. A flock of sheep. Just to mention but a few. So when we refer to a group of things or a collection of people or things seen as what well as a unit, we use we call that what a collective noun. Then lastly we have what we call abstract noun. Abstract nouns. What are abstract nouns? Abstract nouns are those nouns that refer to things that cannot be seen, that cannot be touched. In other words, we are talking about non-concrete or intangible objects. So an example of abstract noun, we have something like courage. Courage is an abstract noun. Nobody can speak courage. Another example is bravery. Bravery is an example of what? Of, a, of an abstract noun. Now, superstition. Superstition is an example of what? Of an abstract noun. Hope is an example of what? Of an abstract noun. Wisdom is an example of what? Of an abstract noun. These are things that we all know that they exist that somehow, or we cannot touch, neither can we what, can we what, feel them. But we know when someone is courageous, when someone is exhibiting bravery, and so on and so forth. So these are the common uh, classes of what, of nouns. Then we talk about other things about nouns. Now, another thing we can say about nouns is that nouns can be classified into two groups. I mean, they can be divided into two kinds. We have what we call countable nouns. Countable nouns, and we have what we call uncountable nouns. Countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Now, what are countable nouns? Countable nouns are those nouns that we can impose countability on them. In other words, we can talk about them in terms of being singular and plural. 
we can count them. So we can say boy, boys. We can say school, schools. We can say river, rivers. But when we talk about uncountable nouns, uncountable nouns are those nouns that we cannot impose countability on them. And in written English, they are not followed by what? By letter S in the plural. For instance, how we where that they not accommodate S after them include the words like what? Information. Information is an example of what? Of an uncountable noun. Equipment. Equipment is an example of what? An uncountable noun. Personnel. Personnel is an example of an uncountable noun. Behavior. Behavior is an example of an uncountable noun. Fruits. I need to explain that later. Fruits. Um, when you look at them, um, another example is that. Um, Ammunition, ammunition, baggages, or what you call baggage, there's not like baggages, we call it baggage. Then traffic, traffic, it's an example of an uncountable noun. Another one is called load, it's an example of an uncountable noun. Where, it's an example of an uncountable, uh, uncountable noun, um, and so on and so forth. Now, we can add S after information. Because information is what is uncountable. In order to make information countable, I can say, I have a piece of information. I have a piece of information. Then he has pieces of what of information. But I cannot say, I have information for you. That is wrong. Equipment is the same thing. We cannot, we cannot accommodate S. I can say equipment. I can say personnel. I can say behaviors. We cannot say fruits now. I need to explain fruits. Now, fruits, when we talk about oranges, bananas, um, or mangoes, and the likes of that, the plural of fruit is fruits, not fruits. It's actually the word fruits. But we can as well have fruits. Now, when S comes after fruits, we are not talking about we are not talking about oranges or bananas. We are talking about rewards. So when I say I shall reap the fruits of my labor, I am talking about reward. I'm not talking about mangoes. I'm not talking about oranges. I'm talking about reward. So it's when we talk about fruits in terms of what of reward, that's when we have what? S type. Now another one we should remember is ammunition. Sometimes these two words are never written together. We have arms and ammunition. Arms and ammunition. Not Arms and ammunition. So we can't add S after ammunition. So we say what? Arms and ammunition. Not arms and ammunition. Another one is what? Baggage. I said another time, people talk about pack your bag and baggage. It's wrong. There's nothing like that. It's pack your bag and baggage. You understand? The same thing also applies what to baggage. Baggage is used by American, while not being used by what? By English people. So it's pack, pack your bags. And baggage. And the same thing apply what to luggage, not luggages. Bag baggages, not, not acceptable. We have baggage and what luggage. Then traffic. I can say the traffic was uh, well much. It's not supposed to be. So tra traffic was uncountable. We can't say the traffic. You understand? But I can say much traffic. Much traffic because it's actually was uncountable. Then road. When we talk about road, when we talk about load and what you carry on your head, you can say the load is too heavy, it's wrong. So load cannot work, cannot, accompany, cannot be accompanied by what? By S. Then where? What about where? Now, when you have house chores to do, house chores like washing of dishes, doing the laundry, you can say, even if you have about 10 chores to do, you can say, I have so many works to do, it's wrong. You can have S at times. But when you talk about you are a writer, or you are a painter, or you have done several paintings and several books that you are written, you can say these are my works. So in those instances, we don't want, we use S after work. So that's what that means. Now, talking about countable nouns. Countable nouns, they have three, um, what do you call it? Cases. We call them cases. Now we're going to talk about. Uh, countable nouns in terms of cases. Now, nouns have three cases. And what are the three cases of noun? The first is number, the second is 
gender, genitive, and the third is what? Gender. Now, when we talk about countable nouns, we can talk about countable nouns in terms of being singular or plural. When we talk about countable nouns, we can talk about countable nouns in terms of being singular or plural. And that is exactly what number means. Now, countable nouns or nouns make their plurals in the following ways. When we talk about the way nouns make their plural, number one is by adding inflections. Number one is by adding inflections. And what are the inflections that we make use of in uh, nouns? The inflections include the following S, E S, I E S, V E S, E N, and so on and so forth. That is to make plural of words. For instance, when we consider the following ways, we have singular and plural. Now, we have the word boy. The word boy is singular. How do I make it plural? By adding the inflection S. The word baby is singular. How do I make it plural? It's by adding what inflection IES. What about the word church? The word church is singular. We make it plural by adding the inflection ES. What about the word ox? The word ox is made plural by adding inflection EN. Oxy. What about the word wife? Wife? It is made plural by having inflection VES. So in this way, in this particular way, we make plural of countable nouns by adding inflections S, E S, I E S, V E N, and so on and so forth. Then the second way that we make plural of words under countable nouns is like I said, through the process called mutation. Mutation is the process of making countable nouns into plural. We have singular plural. Now what is mutation all about? Mutation is all about changing certain letters in the singular to some other letters in the plural. For instance, if you look at the word man, the plural of man is what? Men. The A changes word to E. In the word of uh, goose, the plural of goose is what? Is geese. Geese. Now, double O in goose becomes what? Double E in geese. Another example is what? Foot. Double O in foot becomes what? Double E in geese. In feet. Another example is when you have the word laos. Laos in the word laos, O U S changes to what? To I C E. I C. That's what? Laos. Another example is what? Is mouse. Now, in the word mouse, mouse it becomes what? Max. In other words, O U S becomes what? I C. So, when we form plurals of words in this manner, the process is called mutation. Then, let's move on. Number three, some countable nouns, they have the same form for both their singular and plural forms. In other words, the singular and the plural form are the same. So we have singular and plural. For instance, the word swine in the singular is also swine in the plural. The word deer in the singular is also what deer in the plural. The word salmon in the singular is also what salmon in the word in the plural. The word trout in the singular is also what trout in the plural. The word cock in the singular remains cock. The word sheep remains what sheep. The word aircraft aircraft remains what aircraft. The word series remains what series. The word species remains what species. So in other words, the singular and the plural form are the same. They don't change. Now, I need to introduce something here. There are some countable nouns that we have to be very, very careful in the way we use them. Now, words such as um, does he? Okay, let me start from where such as what? Bear, Dolphin, Score, Gross, uh, Hundred, Thousand, and so on and so forth. Now, we have to be careful the way we use these following words. 
Now, the first thing we need to know is that when these words are preceded by numerals, then we don't add S to the words in the plural. For instance, if I say two pair of shoes were bought last week, that sentence is wrong because the word pair is preceded by what? By a number by numeral two. And as a result of that, I cannot end, I cannot add S to that. So this sentence was is wrong. So the correct version would be what? Two pair of shoes were bought last week. So that is correct. So we don't have S whenever we have numerals coming before what? The word pair, dozen, score, gross, hundred, thousand, and so on and so forth. Another example. The man was two scores and three years when he died. Now, this sentence is wrong. Why? Because the word score is preceded by what? By the numeral two. And as a result of that, there should be no S before I and mean, have that score. So because we added S here, the sentence word is wrong. Now, the correct version would be the man was two score and three years, three years when he died. This is correct. So in other words, whenever we have two, it should be two score, not two scores. So that is one. But when this word, the second version is that when these words are not preceded, this word I'm talking about here, pair, dozen, score, gross, hundred, and thousand, when they are not preceded by numerals, then we cannot add S to them. So I can say dozens of people. Dozens of people attended the concert. Dozens of people attended the concert. I didn't put three here, I didn't say two. So because of that, I can put S after my dozen. So I can say dozens of people attended the concert, that is correct. But I can, if I have three dozen, if I say three dozen, if I put S after the sentence word is wrong. So we say dozens of people attended the concert. Dozens of people attended the concert. Now, we want to look at some other things. Now let's look at some other things under countable nouns. Some other things under countable nouns. Now, we want to look at some words that are always used. They are only used what? in the plurals. What are those words that are only used in the plural? The first one is words that talks about uh, objects that are made up of two parts, forming one instrument. In other words, when you talk about the names of instruments having two parts and they form only one object. For instance, so these words are normally what used in the word, in the plural. So we are looking at words usually used usually used in the plural. So the first one is the first one is names of instruments consisting consisting of two parts. For instance, we have words like what? Scissors. Remember, it is not scissor, but what? Scissors. It's, it is a uh, plural. The other one is in the plural. Pliers. Pliers. Now, we have um, pincers. Pincers. We have thumbs. Thumbs. We have 
bellows, and so on and so forth. So these wells are usually what used in the uh, single, like the plural. Another one is what names of articles of dress. Names of articles of dress, such as so names of articles of dress, such as the following. E.g., we have trousers, not trousers. Trousers, pajamas, pajamas. We have um, uh, breeches, breeches. We have ties, ties. We have drawers, drawers, and so on and so forth. So they are used what? There are some of the words that what? They are usually used what in the plural. So we have as other than trousers, pajamas, breeches. Ties and draws. Now let's have consider some other words that are usually used in the uh, plural. Words that are usually used in the plural. So we have certain nouns. Certain nouns such as the following. Certain nouns such as the following are also what? Used in the plural. We have Words like what? Thanks. Adults. Proceeds. That is what you make from the sale of something. You have um, um, words like what? Arms. We have words like uh, um, um, and so on and so forth. So we have words like tidings. Words like tidings. Words like uh, environs, environs. So all these words are usually what used what in the plurals. Then we're going to look at some nouns that are singular, but they are not what they, they look like they're plurals, but they're actually what singulars. Now we're going to look at number two. We want to look at nouns that look like plurals, but actually what singular. These are nouns that we call plural tantum. In other words, they are actually what are uh, singular, but they look like what? They look like plurals. These nouns include the following names of subjects. Names of subjects. Names of subjects such as physics. Physics looks like what? Plural, because it ends with what? S. Economics. Economics, we have mathematics, mathematics, we have um, statistics, statistics, we have electronics, electronics, we have phonetics. Now what is common to them is that they all end with what? With S. So they look like plurals, but they are actually what? Singular. Now the second group of words in these categories, or now these categories, are the names of common diseases. Names of common diseases. Now what is common to them is that they also want end with S with actually what singular. So we have something like monks. Monks. Measles. Measles. We have rickets. Rickets. We have tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Even the acronym AIDS. They look like what? They look like plurals, but actually what? Uh, singular. So I can say physics are very difficult. What would I say? Physics is very difficult. Now, I can say measles have been eradicated. What I would I say? Measles has been eradicated. Now, we're going to look at some other nouns in this particular category. We said nouns, names of what? Of diseases. Number three. We are going to talk about names of games. Names of games. Remember, we are looking at nouns that look like a plural, but they are actually what? Singular. So, names of games like drafts. Drafts. It ends with S. Billiards. Billiards. It ends with S. Snakes and ladders. Snakes and ladders. Then, at this other game called darts. 
DA and TX. So they look like what? Plural, but they actually what? Singular. Now, these are some things that we have to uh, remember. We have to bear them in mind that even though we have H after them, but they are four plurals. They actually want singular. Now, we look at another group of nouns. Now, these are nouns. Now, we are looking at other group of nouns, and these are nouns that they got some collective nouns. Some collective nouns, though they look like singular in form, but they are always used as what? As plurals. Some collective nouns, that's number four. Some collective nouns always look like what? Like uh, singular, but they are what? They are used as what? As plural. For instance, when you look at cartoon, cartoon looks like what? Like singular because it doesn't have S. People, people, it looks like singular because it doesn't have S. Poultry, poultry looks like what? Singular because it doesn't have S. Very, very, we have a gentry, gentry, clergy, clergy. So, why? These nouns look like what? Singular. But they are always followed by what? By plural verb. So I can say, the cartoons are grazing. The cartoons are grazing in the field. I can say the cartoon is grazing in the field. People are, the people have been told. I can say the people have been told. I can say the people have been told. So they look like singular. But that's the word used as what as plurals. Now, see all this, let's talk about some other group of nouns. They are very, very interesting. Some other group of nouns. I want to talk about compound nouns. What are compound nouns? Compound nouns. Remember, we are still talking about number. Compound nouns are those nouns that are made up of two or more words. And they form only one now. They are made up of two or more words and they form only one now. For instance, if you look at the word teaspoon, teaspoon is made up of the word tea and spoon. And the result is what? Teaspoon. Teaspoon. Look at another word. Newspaper is made up of what? News plus paper. So what we have is what? News paper. We have daughter-in-law. Daughter-in-law is made up of, in fact, three words here. We have two nouns and one preposition. We have daughter-in-law. So these are called compound nouns, when two or more words are joined together to form one singular noun. Now, we want to look at how compound nouns form their plurals. How do these words, how do they form their plurals? Now, the first one is that some compound nouns form their plurals by adding letter S to their first element or by turning their first element into what? Into plural. Now look at the following. The first group. We said they form their plural by adding letter S to their first element or by turning their first word into plural. Look at this example. We have man of war. Man of war. The plural of man of war is what? Is man of war. In other words, it is this man that becomes plural. So that is plural. We will look at another example. Attorney general. Attorney general. What we have in attorney general. So the plural will be what? Attorneys general. Attorneys general. Another example, when we talk about secretary general, it becomes what? Secretaries general. Secretaries general. So it is the first element that becomes plural. Secretary. Now, I say that the first group of compound nouns, they form their plurals by if either you add S to the first element of this, uh, the expression or by turning the first element of the expression into plural. Let's consider some examples. We have man of war. It becomes what? Men of war. So this man becomes what? Men. Attorney general becomes attorneys general. You add S to the first element, which is what? Attorneys. We have coat of arms. 
you have it becomes your cause of arm. You add X to what to cause. It becomes cause of arm. Secretary general, you add you turn the first element into plural, so we have we have what? Secretary general. Sister in law becomes what? Sisters in law. You have something like a uh, chief of staff. It becomes what? Chief of staff. You have S was the chief. Head of state becomes what? Head of state. Another example is what? Commander in chief. Commander in chief. In the word commander in chief, you have S to the word commander. It becomes what? Commanders in chief. So the first group of companies, they form their plural by adding S to the first element or by turning the first word of the expression into plural. Now let's consider seven examples of compound nouns and how they form their plural. Let's consider the second example of group. Now the second category of compound nouns, they form their plural in a very interesting way. Now the two elements that make up, or two or more elements that make up the sentence or the expression are Always, I put of them take what the plural marker. Look at this example: gentleman farmer. Gentleman farmer. You know you have two words: gentleman and farmer. So the plural will be what? Gentleman servant. So, sorry, farmers. Gentleman farmers. Now look at the other example: man servant. It becomes what? Men servant. Men servants. You have woman pilots. Woman pilots becomes what? Women pilots. Women pilots. You have woman doctor. Woman doctor. We have women doctors. Women doctors. Now, this, the words in this particular category are very few. So we say in this example, the two elements or more elements that make up the sentence, each of them take the plural marker. So gentleman farmer becomes what gentleman farmers. Man servant becomes what men servants. Woman power becomes what women pilots. Woman doctor becomes what women doctor. Now let's consider the third category of common nouns and how they form the plural. Now we want to look at the third category of compound nouns and how they form their plurals. Now in the third category of compound nouns, the 